there. I've got to cast the net till every fish is tucked out. You know, everyone's yours. He said, after that, I bring them out, and then they're, they're yours, and I present them to you. But I said, you ain't going to get them out of there unless you saint them out. And that's what preaching is to do, is to saint them out. And, and we cast the net in here, and maybe the Lord say, well, throw your net in on this side. And we throw in there and pull out. Well, in there, we don't get maybe just a fish or two in that altar call. Maybe some of them come up and go on back out in the world. don't make any difference to them. Well, we done our best. We go to the next pole, cast your net in, pull out of there and see what we get in that one. Maybe you don't get a thing that one. Maybe a bunch come to the altar and none of them held out. So that's that's up to the Lord. You see, so we go to the next hole and cast in. Maybe you get a whole bunch of fish in that one. We, like see, that. Right? <laughs> see, we just we just go and throw our net in. That's all. See, the yeah. Lord has predestinated us to preach the gospel, predestinated them who will hear it to eternal life. Now we've got to throw the net. Amen. Right. See, whatever the... Whatever the Lord's is, here they all laying around the altar. Now, Lord, there they are. I've done my best. Here's the gospel net. Got them everyone caught. You know what is fish, and you know what is turtles, and you know what's snakes, and you know what's frogs, and you know what's what it is, but it's yours. But yeah. <laughs> well, we just cast the net. He's seen it, but he didn't admit it. <laughs> well, that's all right. As long as you present it, all right. Now... Looks like everybody's singing songs about a white Christmas and praying for the same. We may have, it looks like. This keeps Amen. up. We may have the white Christmas. And Christmas is the time of year. I just wish it could be Christmas all the time. Amen. Everybody seems to be so friendly around Christmas time. <laughs> Wanting to help one another and everything. And everybody down where she says, Hi, you brother. Other times of year, won't even speak to you. So I... It'd be good if it stayed Christmas, wouldn't it? Amen. <laughs> it's Christmas all the time. And the fact of all the air and everything there is about it, there's something about it that the world tries to make it an Xmas, you know. And But God still has got a Christmas in it somewhere. Amen. Amen. Sure has. He's got something Amen. about just the very names and the thoughts of the birth of the Lord Jesus. Oh, the world's put Santa Claus in his place, sure. But not to the Christian. No. It's Amen. still a Christmas. Now the Christmas is not a Protestant holiday, it's a Catholic day. 25th of December was months and months before our, after, or before our Lord was born. Our Lord was born in April, but he wasn't born in December. If you shoot in December, it's colder than this. <laughs> so you know he wasn't born in December. And it's a spell, it's C-H-R-I-S-T-M-A-S, a mass for Christ. It's a Christmas. We only have one Protestant holiday in America, and Mr. Roosevelt changed that for us. That's Thanksgiving. The rest of them are all Catholic days, every one of them, see. And Mr. Roosevelt changed that for us. So we just have it on every Thursday or something, week or something like that. It isn't on a regular set day anymore. So see what a bundle we got? The whole world has become a conglomeration of, of muck, sin, and despair. It's got to get that way to blow up, see? The whole thing's pulled all the ties out, all the iron and stuff to make ships and bridges and so forth. What God put it together with and welded it together and mended it together like this, taking all the gas and the oils and things out of it like that to burn and the gasoline and the cars and so forth and pulling all the coal out to make electricity. See, you just hollering it out. It's just become a hub just with streaks and things out of it like that. And then the people's just become so sinful, it's just come a great big muck to it. It's just like it was in the beginning, God grieved that he ever made man. Amen. It just takes one little atomic jar to set the whole thing out of order there. Just exactly what he said would do. You see. So we're just living in that day and are happy to be a Christian. Amen. Oh my. <laughs> my, what could I do? If I, I, I believe I'd go wild if I wasn't a Christian looking at the thing. I don't see how people can stand it. I just don't understand how a man can walk on earth today without being a Christian. I wish anybody would give me a yeah. reason, some reason, it, why not to serve Christ. I, 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 you can't give a sensible reason. See, we're just, this is the day that we all are to be happy Amen. and ready. The great homecoming time is at hand. And oh my, it's just a teeny, teeny declaration wrote on every nation, every wall, everywhere, every democracy, every kingdom, everywhere else is falling. Amen. Thou art weighed in the balance and found morning. Kingdoms has. Kings has failed. And dictators has failed. Democracies failed. 
Churches has failed. Human beings has failed. Everything has failed. You say churches? Yes, sir. One Amen. of the biggest failures in the world is the church. And that's right. Churches has miserably failed. Everything's failed. But we receive a kingdom which will not fail. Jesus Amen. Christ. It cannot fail. And we are so happy for that. That it's a, not a church affair. It's an individual affair. It's not whether my church is saved, it's whether I am saved. Right. It isn't whether my deacon's saved or my pastor's saved or my mother's saved, it's whether I am saved or not. Right. Myself, I must be saved. Then I must tell them. And then uh, if they're saved, wonderful. If they're not, I must still remain saved. That's, I must Amen. obtain my salvation. Oh, what a wonderful thing. Amen. To, I, I think every day, for her on Eddie Pruitt's song, that... My hope, no, what did he prove it? I forget who wrote it. Now, my hopes is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Amen. Isn't that a wonderful song? Amen. All around my soul gives way. And he's all my hope and stay, see. On Christ the solid rock I stand. When little doctor, forget his name was, he was preaching the power of the resurrection of Christ for the individual great formal church in New York City not long ago. I had it in the paper where it was cut out. And his congregation is all against him. He believed in the supernatural, the resurrection of Christ, the eternal life, the baptism of the Spirit to give life to the individual believer, and signs and wonders, and his congregation is fixed to put him out. And he had, they had a lease there. He had a, some option that he could stay at this church for so long. And in the old days, they just, they just sat there and soured out on the man preaching. But he was convicted that he was right. He was a sick man, too. Had, and he said... Uh, no, he wasn't a sick man. I beg your pardon. He, he just died at the pulpit, but he wasn't a sick man. So he, they, he, they grieved him to death. And so they just soured down on him and wouldn't listen to him and everything. He just kept on preaching the truth. And they said, they, they had a, it's a social religion. All oh, we come together. And Mrs. Jones over here belongs to here. So we come together and we have our little tea parties and everything. It's just a social affair. But he believed that that was nonsense. That we should come together and be born again. And they made fun of him and everything about his religion and everything. And one morning while I was standing there crying at the pulpit, preaching that Jesus Christ was a reality, he had a heart attack. And he, uh, he, he started falling, and he stood back like that. And some of them, he had a couple of doctors in his audience, so they come pick him up. They put the thing on his heart. He said, he's got a heart attack. He said, sir, you're, you're, you're dying. He said, am I dying? He said, yes. So said, have two of my faithful deacons to come here. They come there and lifted him up. And they said, now, what does this new religion, this thing that you're talking about mean to you now? And he said, now turn me loose. They turned him loose. He lifted up his hand. He said, on Christ's solid rock I stand. All other grounds is sinking sand. And as he did, he staggered backwards like this. There's a cross hanging behind me. He threw one arm over, one across, one over the other side like that. So all other grounds is sinking sands. All other grounds is sinking sands. Oh, God. That's the way. That's it. That's it. Died on the cross, you see, Barney. All other grounds is sinking sands. Christ is the only hope we have. Our faith is built on nothing less. Now, this morning I was going to go into the book of... of Hebrews, the seventh chapter, being a, hearing these testimonies this morning and our request for prayer, I thought I'd just change it from teaching on Melchizedek being the priest, the order made as the high priest, remain as the priest forever, and come back over in the um, uh, gospel or the Acts, rather, and speak or teach this morning on divine healing instead. Because being so many people that's, that's sick, I just heard them request. I was sitting there fixing and reading, studying on this here sixth chapter of, uh, of Hebrews where Melchizedek, uh, uh, the king of Salem, the king of pre, uh, peace and so forth. Then I begin to hear all, I hear him, Brother Neville asked of anyone. I begin to hear, my mother, my baby, my this, my oh, oh. Something that said, go back over into the New Testament. Now, over into one of the... Uh, and I turned over here then, begin to read. Uh, the Acts, the fourth chapter, is where Amen. we're going to start from this morning to read. Just don't know why, but the Holy Spirit uh, wanting me to, to change this. 
over to teach on this, not knowing what to say, of course, never, but just being submissive to the Holy Spirit. Now, everyone heard where the next meeting will be. We begin at, uh, at Chicago, the Philadelphian church, and from there to some auditorium. I don't know just where yet. We're just going to begin. I may be there a day and I may be there six months, see? Just to begin and stay till God says, this is enough, now move somewhere else. And we begin on the 12th day of next month, the 12th day of January at the Philadelphian Church in Chicago. And then we're hoping soon to be in Phoenix and out in the west and around as the Lord will provide. And I am desperately in need of prayer of you peoples to pray for me. And I, not for health, I'm very thankful and grateful for my good health the Lord has given me. And I'm healthier and better, I guess, than I ever was and have been for the last few years. And uh, I'm grateful to the Almighty God who He alone gave it to me. See? Because everything, all others just fail and said I couldn't do it, I couldn't make it even to males. But I am this morning by the grace of God as far as I know in perfect health. So I'm so happy for that. And giving God all praise and all glory. Because no other creature, nothing else could have done it but Him. So I'm happy for it. But spiritually, I, I'm needing a spiritual guidance. It seems to me all the time that I'm a failure. I, I just, uh, just something haunted me. Oh, you're such a poor excuse. Well, that, that's right. See, I, I know that. But what little I have, I want to do the best that I can with what I've got. And I'm longing for more guidance of the Holy Spirit to know what to do that's right. Because after you get 45 years old, of course, I realize I keep saying getting old, but that's not old. I don't mean to make some of you people that's older than I feel bad. That's why well, here's Brother Bosworth in his 80s and better man today than I am. <laughs> but... It's, uh, and look at old Dr. Ham over there, 100 years old, and he's a good preacher yet. So I got a long, long ways to go to get to that. And uh, doubtful whether he'd admit he's an old man or not. So it's just, uh, it's the idea of it is that, of course, now, I don't, if I'm ever going to be at any season or any age to be the best for the Lord, it'd probably be right now. See? Because all the kid things are passed away, and you're settling down, turning gray, and you know, just it's a time of life where you really should be anchored and strong enough yet and just at your very best. Mellowed out the kid part and the boyhood beat out just at the time to enter the field. And if I probably ever go to know anything you know, that I have, I should know it now. And I'm so thankful for what he has showed me in his Gospels and how I'm so glad of that. But I, I yet I just... I just can't satisfy myself somehow. I, I just, something I hunger for God. I, there's just something I ought to be doing, it looks like, and I just can't get Amen. to doing it right. Somehow, I just, as your years ago, I used to tell you, I could just reach at you something and almost touch it, you see. It just seems to me like there's something else out there. I'm just almost touching somewhere if I could only hit Amen. that spot. And just, then, then it would be fine. Now, I was asked about the book that Mr. Church wrote, uh, them things in there. And um, all many has been called and asked if I was going to say anything about it and everything. No. <laughs> I ain't saying nothing about it. Just let it alone, see. Amen. Listen, I'll probably be preaching divine healing when Mr. Church is buried. So now, <laughs> see, divine healing, when me and Mr. Church both is laying in our graves, God's Bible will still be preach, teaching divine healing and people will be practicing it. So it doesn't make any difference. That's, it's too bad that we American preachers hasn't got enough to do but just go around and argue with one another to pick a fuss to stir up something, you see. When God's Word declares divine healing and they have done it from the ages all the way through and it always will be that way. And as far as believing the Word's inspired, I believe that every iota in that Bible is inspired. There's none of it. Let me just pass a little something to you here while we're thinking of it. You know what makes Protestants turns Catholic? It's because the Catholics believe this word's inspired. 
The Protestant believes some parts of it's inspired. The part he wants it to be inspired, it's inspired. The rest of it's not inspired. If it hits his doctrine, it's not inspired. See, that's the Protestant. The Catholic says that it's all inspired, every bit of it, but their church is over the word. So make it what the word says, it's the church. Therefore, I couldn't conscientiously be a Catholic. Nothing against Catholic people. They are my friends. And if they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, they're my brethren. They've accepted him as personal Savior. Now, the churches is what I mean. I could, I disagree with the Catholic doctrine. I could not be a Catholic in that manner, the Roman Catholic Church. Because they, the infallibility of the Pope and the church over the Word and the church being above the Bible, I couldn't do that. I can't conscientiously be a Protestant. Because I can't take part of the Word and say part of it's inspired and this part's inspired. This meant something else. And I'm a Bible worshiper. Amen. I believe that that is God's Word. There's nothing over it and never will be. And as long as there's an eternity, it'll still be the Word Amen. of God. I believe that is... Now, I, there may be things there that I don't understand. Maybe things that I can't bring to pass with my little weak faith I have. Maybe I can't bring it to pass. But it's still the truth. Amen. It's God's Word. It's God's Word. Regardless of what anyone else says, I believe it to be the Word of God. Amen. And I believe that in there is the, the seed. This is a basket full of seeds. Yes. And I believe that the Holy Spirit takes that seed and sows it into our hearts like that. Don't you believe that? Amen. And we become His children. So therefore, I've got to believe if there's one word not inspired, then I couldn't trust the book. No. I couldn't believe it. Because if this part's not inspired, Mr. Church said certain parts of the Bible's not inspired. Like Mark 16 and so forth says it's not inspired. Well, I met his Methodist minister friends right in New Albany. They disagreed with him by a hundred million miles. <laughs> they said that they couldn't have stomach that. And a Presbyterian preacher standing there said, well, brother, I, I don't know what's the matter with the man. See? Uh, he said, well, now look. I said, that's what makes Catholics. That's what makes the Protestants what they are. A weak bunch of nothing. See? I said, it's what it is. Because they have no hopes. They can't build their hopes on this Bible. Because part of it's inspired, part of it's not. Then, no wonder that Mohammed, Dr. Uh, Reedhead, when he was standing there and asked the Mohammed, why didn't he accept the resurrected Lord Jesus? He said, well, he said, uh, let me see you teachers. Make your word come to pass what your Jesus said would do. He said, oh, you're referring to Mark 16. He says, that's not inspired. He said, what kind of a book are you reading? <laughs> he said, our Koran, every bit of our Koran's inspired. That's the Mohammedan Bible. He said, it's inspired. We believe every word of it. Sure. And everything that Mohammed promised, we can make it say so. That's right. He said, now you, you people make this Bible say so. He said, now if it ain't inspired, then you ain't got nothing. <laughs> There you are. He said, you haven't got a thing. Amen. But a little theory in your mind. Well, the man's exactly right. Let it be a pagan. Let it be a heathen there. He's exactly right. But I say it's inspired and every word of it's the truth. Amen. Every Amen. word of it is the truth. And let me show you something. Jesus Christ said, when he wrote the last chapter in this Bible, he said, he that will add to or take out of this word, Amen. the same will be taken out of the book of life. Is that Amen. right? Amen. Who adds to it or takes away from it. Therefore, I believe with all my heart that from in the beginning of Genesis, the Amen in Revelations is inspired of God. It's every bit the truth. There's not one word of it wrong. It's all the truth. I believe every word of it. I don't want to take away or add any. Don't need no more. I just need that. <laughs> that's just what I need. What do you think about that, Gene? You think that's about truth? <laughs> I believe it is the truth. Every word of it. Amen. So we just believe it that way. Now, uh, if you get man with narrow vision in America, look here, friends, where we're arguing about being Methodist or Baptist or Pentecostal and on evidences and all these other things, thousands times thousands every day are dying that never heard of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's all. About 140,000 people die every day unconverted. And we're arguing whether you must speak with tongues or whether you must shout or whether you must belong to the Methodist or Baptist or Pentecostal church. Little old things. And us preachers lazy laying around here doing nothing around over America. Preaching to people has been preached to over and over and over. It's like combing through and combing through and combing through. That's it. And millions in the other land. 
And Jesus, the very last commission he gave was go into all the world and preach this gospel to every creature. Can you see then, friend, why I can't stay home? There's just something in me tearing me to pieces. I, I realize something's got to be done, brother, sister. We, I, I can't do it myself, and I, I don't know what... I see these missionary societies, how they fold up and fail and everything else over there because they got the wrong thing to go with. Or their theology, well, then people laugh at that. You can't go to their theology. They don't even believe that stuff. You've got to show them that God is God. That's right. Amen. And what can a person do? I don't know. But I know one of these days it'll all be over and the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and say, Time shall be no more. Amen. I think it was Daniel standing there on the banks that day and he saw that vision. And an angel come down, clothed in the sun, a rainbow over his head. He put one land, one foot on the land and one on the sea and raised up his hand and swore by him that lives forever and ever, time shall be no more. Amen. Mm. Uh, that's got to happen one of these days. Every word of it's going to be just as he said it was. So then... And then what am I going to do then? What are you going to do then? See, you're responsible just as I am responsible. We're all responsible. We're responsible for the death of Jesus Christ, every one of us. Until we've accepted His personal Savior, then work for Him with all of our heart. Amen. If God has given us something to do, we fail to do it, then God will require it at the end of the day. Oh, so God, give me faith. Give me, give me courage. Encourage me. I get so easy to become discouraged you see because i see things and it's wrong and i i can't straighten it there's no need me trying to do it there's just no need just like arguing with that brother about his book you never get nothing by arguing here not long ago ab Muse, you know him man that died last week he was going over he's just raking me over the coals and things about divine healing my brother moons is a good man i trust in glory today with the other saints of God shouting the victory. Now what attitude he taken towards divine healing? I don't care if every preacher, pope, and everything else would raise up and condemn divine healing. Tomorrow I'll be preaching divine healing. That's right. Amen. Because why? It's in the Word. It's God's Word. It's what God said. It ain't. I'm responsible for what God said. And I'm responsible as the minister to preach what God said and call it the truth. I was going over to get Brother Bose. I turned on the radio. I like to hear Brother Muse. He's a good preacher. And I went over to hear him. And on the road over, oh my, he was raking divine healing as fanaticism and devils and everything else. And he said, for instance, the Bosworth brothers. He said, when I was, they, I was with them when they was in their best, when they were young men, just both kids. And said, they both died, nothing but boys. Said, if there'd been anything in divine healing, what about that? I thought, oh, Brother Muse, fine. He said, Amy McPherson died nothing but a girl. See, just a young kid. And Amy was an old woman when she died. So I thought, oh my. Well, I went on out and I thought, I know that he's made such an error. So I went out to, uh, to, the, to the airplane place over there. And I, I went in. I called him up. I said, Brother Mews? He said, yes. I said, this is Brother Brandon. He said, what do you want? And I said, Brother Mews? You made a little mistake this morning. It'll hurt you if you don't watch, brother. I believe you do the same thing for me. But you spoke and said the Bosworth brothers died when they were both young kids. He said they did. I said, Brother Munes, B.B. is in Detroit now holding a, a meeting. And F.F., Fred Bosworth, is my manager. <laughs> and I said, he's nearly 80 years old. He's in Miami at the time. And I said, Brother Munes, two years ago, we held a revival right here in Louisville together where thousands of people come and listen to Brother Bosworth. And I said, his picture goes out through thousands of people around over the land here. And everything, his articles and things. I said, he's living today and in the very best of hell. And I said, a strong man here at nearly 80 years old, still preaching the gospel, just returned from Africa with me. I said, that's the truth. And I said, Brother Muniz, I believe you'd do the same thing for me. I said, well, you, you've got a great uh, revive, uh, message here on the radio and so forth. you got a you, you got all the, uh, lots of people listening at you. And Brother Muniz, if they find out, and they know that thousands of people is listening, you know Bosworth right now. I said, you make such a statement as that, it'll hurt your ministry. And we're brothers. You shouldn't do that. So I'll straighten it up. Well, see, there's no need of fighting. 
God takes care of all things. Yeah. Don't just love. Amen. Return good for evil all the time. Is that right? When anybody speaks good about you, well, be thankful. If anybody speaks bad about you, bless them anyhow. Sure, that's right. That God takes care of the rest. He's the one. Is that right? He's the one. So after all, we all got to answer to him. And no matter what it is, if your arch enemy, if you got any feeling at all, and the worst enemy you got it, you know, was go to go to a place like hell and make you feel bad. Amen. I don't know of a person. I don't can't think of the lowest person in the world today. And it was stalling up there, ever who it was. I hate to know that man was suffering in the torments of hell this morning. Uh, I'd hate to know, but I sure would. I pray God have mercy upon his lost soul as he died. See, that God won't let him suffer in eternity. Think of a human in the torment of hell that the Bible pictures here to the unbeliever. Just think of a human being. Why, it'd make a stone heart to want a man to go to a place like that. I'd do everything I could to keep him out of it. I sure would. And I'd feel sorry for him to the depths of my heart if he went to a place like that. Now, you can see a brother doing wrong and, and try to guide him, but if he won't listen, then the only thing to do is love him anyhow and pray for him. Isn't that right? Amen. Now, how many loves him with all your heart? Oh, with all your heart. Just love the Lord. That's just good. Now, keep that up. Just keep that up and just want to love him more. Now, this morning, in the blessed old word here, oh, it's such a marvelous thing to read this this New Testament, Old Testament, any of it. But the fourth chapter of Acts this morning, where we start for a little preview now, we're going back. This is during the time that the church had just been rekindled. And this is the time... That we like to speak of. Now, somebody don't let me speak too long. I got a funeral service right immediately after the service here at the Coots's Chapel this afternoon at two o'clock. A uh, Mr. Underwood, and tomorrow afternoon, a uh, Mr. Tinsley, our neighbor here, died yesterday, and so eighty-five years old. And so I have his funeral tomorrow. I just asked Sister Gertie if she'd come with the hymn for me to play one, because I don't think they even have a song or anything for this afternoon. The people. I guess, and I'll ask the uh, Sister Gertie if she'd come play for me this afternoon. Maybe we get fixed for tomorrow for Mr. Tinsley's funeral. Now, in the early age of the church here, this first group of people, that all Israel had been kind of beat down for years and years. But now he had come to the place that Messiah had come and give him a hope Amen. on this Lord Jesus. But beginning, he was persecuted, made fun of, spit upon, called holy roller, everything, or just fanatic, Beelzebub, the devil, and everything else. But he had one purpose, and that was to do the will of God. And regardless of how many people was against him, still he come that the word of God might be fulfilled. Is that right? Yes. See? Now look at the scholars and teachers of that day. While they were scholars beyond anything that we could produce today as far as scholarship, and as far as holiness, why they'd make the holiness church today feel ashamed of themselves when it comes to holiness. They really had to live holy. They lived a separated, consecrated life like Roman Catholic priests today. Not hardly like them. Because they're out in parishes. But all these had to be in one place. Right there in the temple. Thousands times thousands of them. In there separated, consecrated. It's like the Vatican City. And they were scholars of the scripture. They had to know it all just letter by letter by letter. And they were so perfect at it. Even a crook in a letter would just make a whole difference in everything. They had to touch not, handle not, and even if they were, they had to be, the Bible said they were found blameless. Now that's really knowing it, isn't it? Yes. All of them, and yet, of having their heads set strong on one solid thing if they've been taught and not willing to be flexible to the gospel, the whole power of God, they fail to recognize the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. There he was, and the whole scripture spoke of him coming. But they failed to recognize it because they had their own theology. We are the church and 
If anything comes, it comes through us, and we rule the countries and religion, and we're this and we're that. Very beautiful picture of Catholicism today. See? We have everything under our own condition, and then they broke off into little isms, such as Pharisees, Sadducees, different... The Pharisees believed in spirit and angel, resurrection. The Sadducees didn't believe in angel, spirit, or resurrection. And they had all kind of, of different sect among them, just like we have today. Same thing. And here was a man raised up, said, we're a great person. One raised up as a Jesus. Took 400 men out in the wilderness, they all perished. And then others raised up, saying they were some great person, and led them off on some kind of little cults and so forth. And right in the midst of all that time, the real genuine article of God come into the world. Amen. Amen. The real thing. Oh, my. That would start us rejoicing right away. He come not having cults, not agreeing with cults, not agreeing with the church, but doing one thing, the perfect will of God that was written in the Bible. Amen. That's right. He had his, he knew what the Father had said. He knew the scripture by inspiration. So he stayed in regards to what they said. He said, why are you hypocrites? He said, you make your traditions so binding and so forth like that. And by your traditions, you make the word of God of non-effect. See? Yeah. Oh, how he laid it to the hewing rock. Every bit of it, brother. He went right on. Nothing changed him. Oh, I like his fearless way, don't you? Amen. Never a time is ever a bit upset. He knowed he walked perfectly in the will of God. When the storms were raging, the little old boat got ready to sink. He walked out just as cool as he could be. But he stood up on the rail of the boat and looked up and said, Peace. <laughs> to the Father, peace. Looked out upon the ocean. Said, Be still. Walked back and laid down. The waves are just as calm. <laughs> that was him. Never scared. Never excited. Never fussy. They said, oh, we know who he is, Beelzebub. We know he does this by the prince of the devils. He said, if Satan cast out Satan, then his kingdom's divided. And if I, by the finger of God, cast out devils, who does your children cast them out now? You be the judge. Just as cool as he could be. Never, while well, faith was just the subconscious to him. He just walked on. Because he knew he was doing perfectly the will of God. When he healed the sick, what did the Bible say the reason he healed the sick? He healed the sick that it might be fulfilled. Amen. Why? See? Why? It's easy to believe anything God says. If God says tomorrow that it's going to be so hot that everybody could go swimming, it would be hard for me to get a swimming suit ready. <laughs> if he says it's going to pour down rain tomorrow all day long, it's easy for me to take an umbrella with me. <laughs> Is that right? If God says it's going to be a good season next year and all the crops are going to grow everywhere, I can just plain any name of good faith. See? Is that right? Yeah. God says he's going to give us a great meeting tonight. I, I come without even a text in my mind. <laughs> he's going to do it anyhow. Is that right? Yeah. God said so. That settles it. If you're suffering just near you're ready to die and God said, I'm the Lord and healeth thee, that don't waver you a bit. Just go on. God said so. See? That's just that unconscious faith like, you see. Just go right on believing it. God said so, and that just settles it. Well, it was easy for Jesus because he knew he'd come in the acceptable year to do the thing of God and to preach the word of God and to do the signs of God and to fulfill what God said would come to pass. Well, why can't the church today think the same thing, the very words that Jesus said? Because we sound, we get back and say, Oh, the days of miracles is past. Glory to God. This part's not inspired. That is, but this is not because them things can't happen today. See, that's the reason we can't move on. That's right. Oh, if one great body of Christ would raise up in love and respect, you see, move right on as one heart and one accord, unconscious of the faith that's around him. Brother, you'd see a church on earth that would, the millennium would set in right then. It's a coming. It's a coming. Oh, yeah. And by God's grace, we're going to see it. I'm going to be right there. That's right. God's promised it. I believe him. So I'll be right there when it happens. Now, now, it broke the disciples' heart when they knew he was going away. He said, I'll go away. A little while, the world won't see me no more. He said, they said, what is he speaking? He's the hardest man to understand. Nobody understood him. While they'd say, he said to his brothers, his brothers said, let's go up to the feast. 
He said, I'm not going up. When they left, he said, I'm going up another way. <laughs> I ain't going up with them. Because his brothers didn't even believe on him. That's right. His own people didn't believe on him. He said, I'll go up another way. Well, they wondered how. And he said, this man speaks in riddles. We can't understand. Way over here in the 17th chapter, he said, Lo, this before he went away into glory. He said, Lo, now thou speakest plainly and not in riddles or in Proverbs and so forth. Amen. See, they'd say, now he said this. Nicodemus, when he's talking to Nicodemus, he said, how could a man be born again? He said, except a man be born of water. All these things, how can it be? They couldn't understand. He said, that man talks in mystery. Nobody understood. Even his own mother didn't understand him. He's a hard man to understand because he was of God and their mind was of the world. So he made it altogether different man. A mind of the world against the, the, the inspiration of God. Why, well, it's foolishness. But the strange thing that he had power to do what he said he'd do. Amen. That's where God is. And he could do things that other men couldn't do. So then he said, now a little while and the world won't see me no more. Yet you shall see me. Now listen to this. Yet ye shall see me. A ye. Who is he talking to? Believers. Is that right? Amen. He said, ye shall see me. For I, not someone else. Or I will be with you. Even in you. To the end of the apostles. <laughs> to how long? The end of the world. Amen. All the way through Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, I go away, I pray the Father, He'll give you another comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. I, personal pronoun, which was the body, I go away. I pray the Father, before I go, the Father's in me. And he'll send you another comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. He's in me now. When he comes, he'll reprove the world of sin. And the very same things that I do, shall you do. Now I want you to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. The gospel is a demonstration of the power of God. See, the God, Paul said the gospel come not in word only, but through power and demonstration of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now go into all the world and preach the gospel. Lo, I'm with you always. Even to the end of the apostles. No, I mean to the in, end of the world. Amen. A little while and the world won't see me no more. They'll criticize it, make fun of it, just like they do now, he said. But ye, the believers, shall see me, for I'll be with you. Even in you, all the way to the end of the world. I like to see somebody rub that away. Yeah. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the very things that I do, you'll do also. Now, that's either right or it's wrong. And if it's right, it'll make it right. And I can prove it right here this morning that it is right. By God's grace. Doing the same things that he did then. Now, the world stands by and says, ha! Man's lost his mind. It's crazy. That ain't none of them people just worked up. See? Because that's the world. Or oh, you may have a big name. <laughs> that don't have nothing to do with it. Amen. What about up there? Amen. Amen. All right. Now, we believe it to be the same. Then the disciples, they wondered. They said, oh, Lord, where goes thou? Oh, uh, uh, where, oh, where is it you're going? We can't go with you. And this 14th chapter of St. John, he explained it. He said, I'll go to my father's house, for in there as many mansions. I'll go and prepare a place for it. I'll come again to get you someday and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And, uh, and he said, um, the things that I do, shall you do also? Thomas looked at him, or Philip, rather, and said, Lord, show us the father. Uh, who, who is this father you're going to? He said, well, I've been so long with you, you don't know me? He said, when you see me, you see the father. The father's in me. Believe that I and the Father are one. Or believe me for the very work's sake, that the Father's in me. It's not me that doeth the works, it's the Father that's in me doeth the works. Amen. I'm not the Holy Spirit. You're not the Holy Spirit. But if there's anything, He's not the Holy Spirit. But those messages He preaches is not of Him. It's the Holy Spirit in Him. Is that right? Well, some of these days, this whole little frothy frame of His is going to drop down. 
But his Holy Spirit and his spirit become one. And as that Holy Spirit raised Jesus from the grave, also brings his body up in the resurrection. Amen. Amen. So that's the hopes that we have today. Amen. So, well, they all got discouraged. They went up on the day of Pentecost, and Jesus told them, said, go up there and wait. They seen him after his resurrection, and they thought, oh, my, this is wonderful. We see him raised up. Even Thomas said, Lord, I, I said to the apostles first, I won't even believe it unless I can put my hand in his, in his side. And about that time, Jesus appeared in the room. The Thomas said, come here. He said, touch my hands. Put your hands here in my side. He said, feel me. Has the Spirit got flesh and bones like I got? He said, you got anything to eat? He said, yes, we got some bread and fish over here. He said, give me some of it. You stood there, eat it, swore it. He said, now, does the Spirit eat the way you see me eat? Thomas said, oh, it's not only my Lord, but he's my God. He said, my Lord and my God. He said, now, Thomas, because you felt me and you've seen me and you've handled me and everything, you believe. He said, how much better is their faith? He's never has seen me and yet believe me. Amen. 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 He said, now, come out here. He went out. He said, now, behold, I send the promise of the Father upon you. He said, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you're due with power from on high. He said, now I want you to go into all the world and preach the gospel. All the world. And preach the gospel to every creature. Is that right? Yes. He said, these signs shall follow them and believe. Yes. In my name they shall cast out devils. They'll speak with new tongues. They'll take up serpents. They'll drink deadly things. If they lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. And when he did that, he would give them their last commission. What was the first commission he ever gave to his apostles? you like me to read it to you? It's found in the uh, 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 10th chapter of Matthew. Yeah. Jesus commissioned his disciples. He said, go out, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils as freely as you have received, freely give. Amen. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Is that right? Yes. That's his first commission to his apostles. His life's commission to the apostles. That wasn't only the apostles now. They chose 70 Amen. Is that right? Yes. Seventy have been chosen. And he's given the whole seventy, sent them by twos. Two and two. He said, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils as freely as you receive, freely give. Don't take no money and a whole lot of changes of clothes in a big suitcase. So just take off. Said, for the laborers worthy of his hire, don't muzzle the ox and tramps out the corn. Said, go ahead. And then they went out and preached. That's his first commission. Then his last commission was, Go ye into all the world. Now, if his first commission was to heal the sick and cast out devils, how are you going to try to cut off the last commission, which is really more important than the first commission? Amen. The first commission was given before Jesus was ever glorified. Before the atonement was ever made. And if divine healing was the other side of the atonement, and the atonement speaking of divine healing, how can we deny it on this side of the atonement? Amen. Can't do it. Can't do it. It just isn't to be denied. It's the Word of God. And every time to any revival, any age, that they ever had a revival, they had divine healing and miracles in them. Amen. Amen. Through Moody, through Sankey, through Wesley, through Knox, through Calvin, all of everyone had signs and wonders. Amen. But the world's cooled off, see. It's cooled off then, too. But they started a revival. Look at John Wesley. Talk about miracles. <laughs> Martin Luther. Even Amen. great men. Even like presidents, like Abraham Lincoln, George Washington, and all of them. Four Valley Forge. George Washington prayed till his sides was wet from up here, standing in the snow. The next day, three musket, musket bullets went right through his coat and never touched him. See? Why, it's been miracles all along. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. All the time. God is a miracle worker. And all believes Him, that's born of Him, has the same mind that was in God's and the man. Amen. For He's the Son of God. Amen. And He can't do nothing else but believe the great and powerful and supernatural because He is a part of that supernatural. Yeah. Look at God before there even was an Adam in the air. Before there was anything and nothing but God everywhere. He filled all space and all time. Amen. He said, let there be. And it was. 
This world that we live on is just one of God's words speaking out and materialized. Now, if you're a part of Him, you have to believe that. Amen. But if you don't believe it, show you never become a part of Him. Listen, it's not Him that wants to get saved that's saved. It's Him that's saved by God's choice. Amen. Esau wanted to get saved too. He wept bitterly and couldn't find no place to repent. He wanted to get saved. It ain't because you want to get saved. God said, I call harden who I will harden. I have mercy on whom I want to have mercy. Amen. That's right. He said, before Esau or Jacob either was born, not knowing right and wrong, God said, I love Jacob and hate Esau. And Esau tried to get right with God and couldn't. Amen. Pharaoh tried to get right with God and couldn't do it. Amen. So it's not you. It's not what you want. It's what God has ordained for you to do. Amen. That's right. Paul said in the ninth chapter of Romans, there has the potter got power over the clay to make an honor vessel or a dishonored vessel to show his glory yeah. to those who he has honored. You didn't know that, did you? Yeah. Amen. That's yeah. what the scripture says. Yeah. Pharaoh tried his best to repent. He was kind hearted. He said, sure, I'll let you go. Well, God said, no, he ain't. I'm going to harden his heart so he can't do it. Because yeah. God's word has to be fulfilled. And if we're living in this day when formalities and things has broken the church down, broke away, well, it's God's word being fulfilled. As sure as God said these signs would follow them to believe, as sure as God said these churches would be like they are now, God also said this opposition would meet it. Amen. So the same God that ordained signs and wonders ordained that these should be persecuting against them. Amen. So there you are. If you're on the other side, I feel sorry. Yes. Now, I want Amen. you not to be that way, but maybe you can't help it. Amen. God might have fixed it that way. I asked you a while ago before I said this, how many of you love the Lord to find out you're all Christians to begin with? Because you cannot be a Christian. This is not for the outside world. This is for people of the Lord. You can't be a Christian unless God chooses you. Amen. No man can come to me except my Father draws him. And all that comes in, I'll give him everlasting life and raise him up at the last day. Amen. God foreordained it, foreknowed it. Yes. Before the world ever began, he said he predestinated us in Christ as sons of, the, of God. Amen. Before the world ever started. Yes. We got to be. Yes. And because you've turned your back and you've seen people who've talked to them, they wouldn't listen to it. They turned their nose up at it. Yep, maybe ministers. Maybe preachers of the gospel. Maybe what you would think was renowned Christians. Not even saved. Amen. That's right. Not even safe. Look at those Pharisees back there. Just as religious and pious and clean and holy as they can be. And scripture minded man like that. And Jesus said, you're your father the devil. See? These things in the Bible that the church don't know nothing about, friend. Yeah. Right, yeah. see? And you wonder sometimes how these things. Why does the Bible say this? Why did Jesus say, uh, Peter said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And here we have people up the altar caring for this and caring for that one. That made God's word a non effect. Amen. God's got to take care of His word. And the minute you meet His requirement, God will answer His word that quick. Amen. Amen. Because He's there to wait for it. But you see people saying, oh, unless we shout, or unless we speak with tongues, unless we dance in the Spirit. All those things are all right. They're all right, but they have nothing to do pertaining to salvation. No, no. Not a thing. Because as soon as you repent of your sins, if truly God's convicted you and you've repented and been baptized in Jesus Christ's name, God's under obligation to give you the Holy Spirit right then. Amen. Amen. Right? Because His Word said so. Amen. Amen. And He can't. There's nothing on God's part. It's your part. Amen. Because people have been mistaught. Each time we come along, get a little something started, we say, this is it, this is it. Oh, my. It isn't these fleshly demonstrations. They're attributes of the Holy Spirit, but receive the Holy Spirit is to receive a person, Christ. Amen. 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 Then these other things take place in the life. Yes. We've seen people shout and live all kinds of life. We've seen people uh, speak in tongues and do the same. We've seen people go out and pray for the sick to be healed and do or live any kind of life. Jesus said, many will come to me and say, Lord, have not I prophesied your name, preach? Have not I cast out devils in your name? Yes. Have not I done these mighty works? Yes. You say, well then, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I didn't even know you. Amen. It ain't him that willeth or him that runneth. 
It's the God that hath mercy. The Bible. Amen. He said, didn't I say to Moses, I have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I harden who I will harden? Paul said, no, old man, will you say, then how can he find fault? If he predestinated you to eternal destruction, how can he find fault? He said, oh, man, can the thing that's made say to him that maketh him thus? Can't do it. So you see people that you can't talk to and just won't listen and won't listen to the scriptures and believe in half of it's right and half of it's wrong and yet they do this. You say, could that be ministers? The Bible said so. Amen. It said man of old was foreordained to this condemnation to take the grace of God and turn it to lasciviousness. Amen. What is lasciviousness? Knowing truth and one walk in it. He said when the truth has been presented to somebody, he willfully turns away from it and ignores it. There's no more sacrifice or sin left for that person. Why? There's nothing in him to believe. Do you get what I mean? Looky here. How could you feed a lamb slop? He wouldn't need it. That's right. He wouldn't need it because he's a lamb. But a pig will eat it. See what I mean? Because he's a pig by nature. And all that's ordained to everlasting life will hear the truth and believe the truth and come to the truth. Amen. But those will go to church and be just as pious as the rest of them, yet won't receive the truth. Amen. Because there's nothing in them to blend with it. They can't believe the supernatural, for there's no supernatural in here to blend with the supernatural. Amen. There you are. I see, that. see what I mean? Amen. There's nothing supernatural. I see a lady's got a little sick baby laying there this morning. I see her getting out of the car and across the street. Something, she probably heard the radio broadcast or something. She knew he was going to pray for the sick. Something down in her heart says, take the baby to church. She obeyed that. Amen. That's right, see? For there's something in there that says it's right. Yeah. Amen. See what I mean? Amen. Where did it come from? Amen. Every thought, everything that you have comes from somewhere. Amen. It's got to have a beginning. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, my. Hallelujah. I love this. Amen. It's got to have a beginning. So where did the origination start from? Amen. Hallelujah. See? Lord. It started in glory. Oh. Whirled down to the angelic realms. Amen. The messengers of God have swept down and said, this is it. You looked at the Amen. word. Where did it come from? From there. Amen. And there, that part up there is in here also says it's right. Amen. Amen. It's like if I want to call California. The first thing I take down my receiver, dial the operator, Central, yes, dial me so-and-so in California. I have to go through Central. See what I mean? From my house out to Central. From Central across the nation. That's it. Whatever you ask the Father in my name, I'll do it. The first thing you know, we have to go through Central. First thing you have to dial the pages to see if there is such a place. <laughs> is that right? And you get the place. Then you take down and say, Father, yes, in Jesus' name, give me this. There it is. Serve me, my son. Plug it in. Hey, Peter, come whirling back down to the line. God's word made manifest. Sure it is. That's just how simple the Bible is. The believers is. Salvation is. Healing is. Everything that God promised is there. It's yours. Amen. Just ask for it. Anything that he died for belongs to you. There it is. The whole thing. And how we love it. Isn't it food to your soul? And every time we believe that little speck in there just gets bigger. Bigger, bigger. Swells out. That while it just becomes you believe all things. As all things begin to come in, love begin to come in, doubt, hatred, malice, fear just flies out like that. It just spreads out. This gets so big that it just bursts a little old shell out. See what I mean? All the world is purged. We grow daily in the grace of God. Now you notice those people that accept and say, Well, I accept the Lord. You take their word for it. I would too. I can't judge. God does. But in ten years from now, they've never progressed a bit. Just stand right in the same old place. See? We grow daily. Each day our heart hungers. He's moving on. There's something growing inside of you. Amen. You get bigger. Spread out. You can take more material. Paul said when you told the Corinthian church, said you're maturing, growing. But when you ought to be teachers, you're still babes needing teaching. 
When you ought to be teachers, something in there growing out, pushing out, making bigger. The Holy Spirit growing. The new birth. If a birth is born from the outside, from the inside out, the child, it grows. If it lives, if it doesn't, it remains. Is that right? Well, when a birth is on the inside, shouldn't it grow? The Christ in your heart ought to be growing daily. Getting bigger, more powerful, understanding things better, forgiving, walking on as God would. Amen. Amen. The Christ be formed in you. Amen. Amen. The hope of glory. We must contend with the weak until they are fully matured in Christ Jesus. And they're good soldiers. Amen. And they've got on the full armor. Talk about them, don't hurt them. Laugh at them, make fun of them. They don't pay attention to it. They got one thing, you're just so big, my. Just so full of glory. The only thing you have to drop is this old robe of flesh and just go right on to glory. Amen. See? Amen. Somebody say, you know somebody said you was a hypocrite, Miss Jones? Then. Well, God bless them. <laughs> Do you know certain certain things are going on that church ought to be on? Well, I'll pray for it. <laughs> See? Big! Oh, if you're little and you say, oh, it is. Let me get in. Which side must I join? <laughs> See? There's where you get in trouble. That's where you can't mature. But when you get big enough, large enough, you see, swelled out. Not only swelled out, but grown out. Christ growing in you, growing out malice. Take it out of you. Push it out. Amen. As God comes in, just pushes out. You say, oh, how little, how juvenile it is. How much kids it is to argue and fuss. But first thing you know, that just grows on over top of it. Ain't got no more room for it. Oh, I used to hate... To see this and to hate that. But you know, I just got so I just don't pay attention to it no more. You're growing. <laughs> yes, sir. You know, when you're young, they claim you have growing pains. <laughs> when you're growing. <laughs> you know what I mean? It means you're getting bigger. Yeah. A little, you know, you think your arms will hurt. And your legs will hurt when you're growing. Kids, I had it. I was getting bigger all the time. Oh, my. <laughs> Sometimes we have growing pains when we get to be men and women. When we're born in the kingdom of God. Christ! But the thing about that, it hurts. The thing about this, it just makes you joyful and happy. It's growing pains. You're going out, getting bigger. You get to be a bigger man now than what you used to be. You can look over things. Not you just got wider shoulders. That don't mean nothing about it. But you're wider in here. Not across here. In here. Here's where you're supposed to spread out, get bigger. Yeah. In your heart, on the inside. When Christ comes into the heart, then he comes into the mouth, then he comes into the eyes, he comes into the mind, he comes into the mouth, he makes you talk different. Yeah. You don't talk like you used to. Christ got in your mouth. Yeah. Don't grow now from your heart, you love, you had burned to you, you can bridle your tongue. Brother, that's a great thing. Yeah. Then the next thing you know, it grows into your eyes. The next thing you know, you find out that old lustful things you used to look at, you turn your head. Amen. You're growing. Amen. Then the first thing you know, you still turn your head, but you're thinking. See? That's why it grows into your mind. You don't even think about it anymore. Then you're just a great big boy then. You're Amen. coming into a full matured man living for the Lord. Amen. So then you are in Christ then, a new creature. Now when these apostles begin to receive that, oh, they are so happy. They thought, oh my, isn't this wonderful? And... The Holy Ghost had filled them and they were out there healing the sick and doing wonders. And there's a little fellow by the name of Peter and John. They passed through the gate and it was beautiful in the third chapter there. And they, we have more time to deal on it, but we haven't. We got to hurry not to get down for a few verses. Hey. I'll start a background and never get to the chapter that I'm talking about. So then you get into good. It's just so good. It's ever been good. Hey, hey. And it's just everywhere you find it, you just don't want to leave it. It's just... Hey, Listen, I've read the Bible for 23 years. And if I hadn't read but one line, I could still be preaching on that one line. It was a new text ever not a new thing ever done. Amen. See, it's just so real. It's inspired. If it's inspired, there's not, it has no end. It's for everlasting to everlasting. Yeah. If one word, I am the Lord, you could preach on that for a hundred million years. And it would be just as fresh as the day it was spoken. Amen. See, it's just endless. It just goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on. There's no end to it. You just keep on going. Now, listen to this. Now, 
Their disciples that had a wonderful time, and Peter went out to the gate called Beautiful Him and John. They'd been up there praying, having a wonderful time, and here laid a man with a little, he was lame. You know what a lame person is? Kind of, kind of, can't hardly walk. Maybe had arthritis or something. He was lame from his mother's womb. Peter looked going by there, talked with John, said, Now we're going into the temple to worship. Said, John, now aren't we having a wonderful time or something like that? Glory in their heart. Had to kind of watch what they're saying because the audience and the people around were so persecuted, so persecuted. There laid a man crippled in his mother's room. Poor old beggar looked out there and he wanted something. Peter said, Now silver and gold, I have none. I don't have any money. But such as I have, I'll give it to you if you want to accept it. And he looked up at him as if he received something. He said, In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. And so the man couldn't move. So Peter just walks over and took him by the hand. Him and John both and lifted him up. Say, didn't you hear what we said? <laughs> stand up and walk. <laughs> That's it. The man stood up. Well, why well, he said, first thing you know, he's hailing him a little bit. His ankle bones got a little bit better. And he started off. He said, well, look at here. <laughs> and away he went. The first thing you know, he began to leaping and jumping and running. And you know what the people said? So said, what's the matter with that man? Well, they took him in there and beat him and put him in prison. Well, so they ought to do this and never come to the church. <laughs> there you are. Now, the fourth chapter begins. And as they spake unto the people, the priests and the captains of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them. Peter and them still speaking to the people. Oh, they was, listen up here. Let me get this a verse or two behind this in the third chapter. Kind of back it up a little here. Let's take the 20th verse. And he shall send Jesus, pray, uh, Peter preaching, he shall send Jesus, which before was preached unto you through the prophets and everything. So he told them you ought to receive it, but they didn't. He told them back there, said, with wicked hands you've crucified the prince of life. Told them. Said you did it through ignorance. Because God said you was going to do it. Why couldn't those priests believe? Why couldn't a religious holy man Oh, I can't let this go by, brother. Amen. Amen. Look, religious holy man living in every bit of life they had and everything else. Religious holy man. And they could not. The Bible said they could not believe on the Lord Jesus. Wow. God predestinated it. Isaiah spoke it. It said they had eyes. said they could not believe on the Lord because Isaiah said under inspiration. Yes. God dropped it down to him about 800 years before they come. Said they have eyes and can't see, ears they can't hear. And therefore they could not receive Jesus no matter how much they wanted to believe. There was something that looked like them because God had said so. Amen. Brother, you ought to be the happiest person in the world. You know, this morning you're sitting here as a believer on the Lord Jesus. Amen. Yes, sir, brother. You don't realize or a sinner doesn't know what it means that when Almighty God knocks on his heart, why, there's nothing like it nowhere. You could, you could search and comb the heavens and you couldn't find anything equal to that. And how a holy infant God would come down and knock at the heart of a sinner's door and want to live buddies with him. Amen. You ought to make his break loose every Watch here. He said it was before preached to you. Now listen. Even before the birth of, even before the Andaluvian world, the Antiluvian world, before it was destroyed with water, Jesus Christ was preached to the people. Amen. In the Garden of Eden, Jesus Christ was preached to the people. Do you know that? When Jesus died at the cross to fulfill that with Jesus, not the Holy Spirit in him. See, when he died at the cross and his soul, not the God's Spirit, but his soul went to hell because he had to. The Bible said he would. But Jesus believed that he'd raise up again in three days because, you know, three days corruption is set in. And David said, I'll not leave my holy one see corruption. Neither will I leave his soul in hell. Amen. Jesus said, you destroy this body in three days, it'll raise up again. Within three days. He wasn't there exactly to the minute. Three days. There was sometime within that three days he'd raise up again. Amen. For he knew he'd go to, his body would go to rotten in plain words. He would go to deteriorating, going away after three days. And he knew that not one cell would corrupt. Amen. For he said, I'll not suffer my Holy One to see corruption. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Jesus with one single scripture spoke by a backslidden preacher Amen. under inspiration. Believe it. And trusted his soul to go to hell. Amen. That's right. And he went and preached to the souls that were in prison. That repented not in the long suffering of the days of Noah while the ark had been prepared. They had Enoch and all the rest of them and the pyramids and everything is erected them and preached the Lord Jesus Christ to them. And they refused to accept it, being heavy high minded, and refused to accept it. And Jesus come to the gates of hell and said, I'm he that the prophet said would be here. Hallelujah. You see, I'm here. God worked the fallible. Amen. Thousands of years has passed by. Four thousand years, but I'm here. My blood's on Calvary this morning. Sure, God's word's real. Why did you repent? They were lost and doomed. So will it be when the coming of the Lord will come again. God's word's infallible. What he said would take place will take place. There's nothing can stop it. No hindrance can stop it. No matter how times change, how people change, how preachers change, how churches change, God's word will remain. Lord, come. He'll be here. He'll come in His glory with all of His angels. Amen. That's right. God's word said so. And someday, every individual sitting in this room today Amen. will bear record, seeing Him coming. Amen. Glory. He'll be coming to your joy or to your sorrow, one or the other. Right, he's got to come. God's word's infallible. Amen. Amen. Remember the Statue of Liberty up there, out in the arm that night. I guess I've told it here before. I've seen those little old sparrows laying around there, around that big glass there, with their little old heads beat off. I said to the guy, I said, well, what them there? He said, well, they had a storm last night. And he said, when the lights was on the Statue of Liberty, the little birds caught out there in a the storm and darkness. Instead of trying to use the light to fly to safety, they flew against trying to beat it out. Now, the very same light that caused them to die could cause them to live if they'd used it right. He said, and they're laying there because their brains is beat out. They trying to beat that light out, accept the light and said, thank you, and let it lead them. They tried to beat it out. I said, praise God. Infidels arise. Critics arise. People saying the Bible's not right. Right. It's not inspired. They're only beating their brains out when they can take it and they can take it for glory. It's a light, a lamp to the path and to the people. And any man or woman who will accept God's word and say, I may not understand it, but Lord, I'll walk in it to the light. Amen. We'll walk in the light, that beautiful light that comes when the dewdrops of mercy are right. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. Amen. Sure, we'll walk in the light. Not try to beat it out. Not try to say this is not right, this is wrong, that, that's not right, and that's not right. Oh, God! Don't let me beat against your life. Let me accept it in my heart and say, it's right, Lord. Amen. And I'll walk in the light. Then birds could tuck that light and search it right around as it was moving out through there. And went right on into a nice coven or some house somewhere, in a shelter somewhere. And had been protected from the storm. And all this great storm of formality. A great storm of indifference. A great storm of denial of God. Oh, God, don't let me try to beat the light out. Let me use it to walk in. I believe it, Lord. There you are. Walk in the light. As I see it in the scripture, that's light. It's God's word. Then let me walk in it. Lord, Lord, let me walk in it. Never, never try to deny it. And he shall send Jesus, which was before preached unto you, whom the heavens must receive until the time of restoration of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all His holy prophets since the world began. 21st verse of the 3rd chapter. All the restorations of all things. When there be a new heaven, a new earth, a new government, a new economy, oh my, a new king, a new life. A new beginning with no ending. Oh my. A new age. A new time. A new people. Amen. 
Oh, I'm so glad I have the promise of God. Amen. So infallible that Amen. he went to hell to witness to it. The same God promised me I'd be there with everlasting life because I accepted his son Christ. Amen. And believe every word he said to be the truth. Amen. Amen. Just got to be there. Oh, my. What a wonderful thing. Amen. How in love we should be with him, that lovely, infallible, holy one of God. How we should love him and let everything else be second. Everything, even your home, even your family, even everything, even all your people, everything else is secondary. He that will not forsake father, mother, sister, brother, husband, wife, children, or home, whatever it is, and follow the edge is not worthy to be called mine. And he that will put his hand to the plow and even turn to look back is not worthy of plowing. Give me oil in my lamp, Lord. <laughs> Oh, God, just fill me over and over. Vaccinate me from the things of the world. May I be immune from all ungodly things is what I want. Let your Holy Spirit come to me and make me immune from all the things of the world. I want to see Jesus. I want to see Jesus. Don't you? (laughs) Jesus, my Savior, so true. But when I reached that strand on the far away land, arriving over there in a new country, knowing nobody, that I want to see Jesus. I know I have a friend there. Don't you? Then Jesus will show me mama. He'll show me my loved ones and all my loved ones around me then. Mm. That's when the restoration of all things See, listen, let me read that again, the 21st verse. Whom the heavens must receive. That's the heavens must receive Jesus. See? Until the time of restoration of all things, all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of his holy prophets since the world began. Oh, my, what an inspired man that was standing there. Yet the Bible said he was ignorant and unlearned. He healed a man at the gate called Beautiful through his faith in the name of Jesus Christ. Right. And they them religious teachers, doctors of divinity, high up and ups, and the greatest of church and everything said, Bind that man, put him in jail. Why, that heresy is nonsense. But he knew what he was talking about. They took knowledge to them, knowing they had been with Jesus. Oh, God. (laughs) That's the education I want. Amen. If I can live close enough to God that others can see Christ in me and Christ in you, that's all the education I care about. Amen. I, that's where I want to be. I don't want to say, well, now his grammar is so fine. He's got such an education. He knows theology. Oh, my. God, take that away. I, I, don't, I ain't got it. I'm glad of it. Amen. Amen. Let me have Jesus. Amen. So where I can walk and people say, that guy, I don't believe him, I, but he, he sure been with Jesus. That, don't tell what you want him to say about you. Yeah. That woman, that girl, yeah. that man, that woman has been with Jesus. Yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, watch their life. Look how they live and watch how they walk. Watch how God blesses them and honors them. And when they have their mistakes and things like that, it's just gone. Like that, they move right on. Like, oh, my, that's the way I want to be, don't you? Now, for ten minutes, let's read this rest of this chapter, or we'll begin this chapter of it. Fourth verse, fourth chapter. And as he spake unto the people and the priests and the Sadducees of the temple, uh, Sadducees, rather, in the, of the temple, and the Sadducees came upon them. Now, here's the Sadducees, which don't believe a real picture of churches today that don't believe in the supernatural. Amen. They just couldn't believe it. Now, remember, remember, there's people today that don't believe in the, the Holy Spirit ruling the uh, governing the church. They don't believe in miracles. They don't believe in signs. They don't believe in supernatural. They just can't believe it. Now, that spirit's not nothing new. Here it is right here on the Sadducees. They believe the same thing. See? Spirits don't die. People die. Spirits goes on. God took his spirit, took his man, Elijah, and a double portion of his spirit come up on Elijah. Is that right? Then about 800 years later, come on John the Baptist. Is that right? And comes right on down to the last day again. God took his son, the Lord Jesus. You believe that? But his spirit come back. Is that right? It was on Martin Luther. It was on John Wesley. It was on down through the ages. On Sankey, Moody, Finney. 
Now it's cow with all of them, see, coming right on down. And it's now going right on today. Look at their children back there. They just deny everything that people believed in. But not the founders. When I stood not long ago over the side of a, a great founder standing there, and I looked and I thought, oh God, look at there, Dwight Moody. I thought, look up here, and that man, the things that he believed in, the power of God, the supernatural, uneducated, his books that you read, you see who wrote them. He wrote them himself, but who polished them up? His grammar was terrible. He had about a third grade education and an old shoe cobbler. But brother, he sent a half a million souls to God. Amen. See? Amen. What was it? They turned him out of the church and said he was a fanatic and everything else. And he went out and seen a bunch of men. He had a message on his heart. He had to preach so much he didn't know what to do. So he went and bought a shoe box from a man. A big old wooden shoe box. Paid a dime for it. Sat out on the corner and these men coming by. He stood there and preached out on the corner to him like that. That's right. And I think of the church that he had and look at the Moody Bible today. Yes. And I thought, look at John Wesley when I stood right in the place where the man died. I had his robe that he had on last. They put it over my shoulders just in respect of being there when I prayed for the king. Well, and put it on my shoulders. I stood in his pulpit that where he'd go every morning at 5 o'clock and preach to 1,500 people. I sat in his chair where he won a chicken uh, 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 fighter that uh, a fellow used to fight had rooster fights. He wanted to cry. And had leather over it like this and two big horns. And a place like this is set up on this side like here where they take record of the fight. And after Wesley was converted, uh, Wesley converted this man to Christ. Then he'd give him the chair. And I sat in the chair and, and prayed. I sat in his saddle where he's right here in America. in his little secret compartment in the back of it. When he would sit backwards on his horse, turned his stirrups around like this. And on his road, coming here with Asbury and him, he would sit there and write out his messages and things like that as God would give it to him. As he couldn't even take time to stop anywhere, he rode on his horse right here in America, sat in the saddle. Amen. And I thought, oh God, I stood there where that memorial's built to him. We're one time preaching divine healing. And the high church of England turned a fox loose and of hounds up there and run it through the midst when Wesley is preaching divine healing. And Wesley pointed his finger in his face and said, The saddle I set on your head three times and you'll be calling me to pray for you. And the man died that evening with cramps in his stomach calling for him, Wesley, come pray for him. Amen. That same man! <laughs> you can say in your church here, Dr. Church and them, the very doctors of the same church that be the same thing denies the Bible being inspired. Amen. God have mercy. I don't know organization. But help me to live so that in my generation, I'll not stand in another generation. I'll have to, have to judge them. I'll not have to stand the judgment with them, but I'll have to stand the judgment with men and women who I've lived with. Amen. That's work count chapter in the resurrection. When my days is finished and I've done my best, if I be God's servant, God will raise him up another man in that day when I'm gone. Amen. So there's no need to be setting something around my theology is me to live in what light I have and wait till on God for the next generation to come. He'll have a man there when that generation comes up. Amen. Oh, my. Be grieved. Listen to these Sadducees. Be grieved that they taught the people and preach through Jesus the resurrection of the dead, the supernatural. Oh, they say that's, oh, we believe in the resurrection of the dead, but now divine healing and other things, that's out. What's the same devil? It's the same thing. See? Now, them days they said, oh, we know he can heal, but he makes himself God when he forgives sins. Now that same devil just turned it right back around and said, Today he can forgive sins, but he can't heal. <laughs> if he's God, he can heal, save, forgive sins, or anything. Yeah. He remains God. The same yesterday, day, and forever. Look. And they laid hands on them and put them in a hole until the next day. For it was now evening time. How be it many of them... Which heard the word believe. Why? Why did some of them believe and some didn't? Oh, brother, some was ordained to everlasting life and some was ordained to everlasting condemnation. Amen. That's why. It's exactly. Jesus said, no man can come except first my father shows him. My father. How could a fish bite on the bait of a turtle? See? You can't do it. The appetite of a fish is different than the appetite of a water spider. The snake and the fish don't have the same diet. No. See what I mean? Yes. yes, sir. The fish is always one thing. For he was born to fish. Right. He'll forever be a fish. Yes. And this man might interpret this turtle might want to be a fish. The turtle's got fish meat in him. No. But he ain't a fish. Yes. He's got other meat in him. Yes. Two. He'll never be.
be a fish. Amen. No, sir. Neither will a fish ever be a turtle. For he started a turtle, he'll remain a turtle. And he started a fish, he'll remain a fish. And every man or woman, hallelujah, is ever born turtle of the Spirit of God. You may backslide, yes, sir. When you go back out, you'll be the most miserable person that you ever dreamed of in your life till you return. And if you fail to do it, God will take your life off the earth. Amen. God promised to do it. Here not long ago, I walked into Bargain's garage down here, and I was talking to a fine preacher, which is my neighbor here. And I always had the greatest respect for the man. He was a good man, a fine preacher. Walked out on these streets and during the time of the precious sun and raw products to preach the gospel. Yes, sir. Some man made fun of him right here on 7th Street. Said, why don't you, you do so and so? He said, sir, this is a legitimate living. He said, I'm selling here some products and such stuff, this cake flour, whatever what it is, to do the best I can, but I'm a minister of the gospel right here at the church of God, is Brother Ramsey. And he said, I'll do the best that I can. And so he told the man he was really born in the Spirit of God. And I walked into Osborne's garage down there one day and he said, I said, God bless you, Brother Ramsey. I said, he's a foreman. I said, look over my old car here. God, take a trip. I said, just had a wonderful time. I said, I wish you were with me, Brother Ramsey. He said, well, I guess they've been all right, Billy. I looked around and I thought, that don't sound right. You know, you can tell when something's happening. I looked around and he said, Brother Bram, I guess you know I don't serve the Lord no more. I said, what? I said, now you're joking me. He said, no, I don't serve him no more. Well, I thought he still he was kidding me. I just went on out. I went home and told media about it. I said, Brother Ramsey told me he didn't serve the Lord no more. There's something about that meeting he's not just exactly right. It got on my nerves. I went back down again. I said, Brother Ramsey, come here, I'll talk to you. And he said, all right, Billy. I walked around. I said, Brother Ramsey, <laughs> I was in here a couple days ago and you told me you didn't serve the Lord anymore. I said, you just teased me, wasn't you? He said, no, no. I said, Brother Ramsey, you mean you don't serve the Lord no more? He said, no. He said, I've backslid. I said, well, Brother Ramsey, you better get back to God. I said, come go with me in the meeting. He said, no, Billy. He said, I, I just don't care to serve him anymore. He said, I, just, I said, you believe him? He said, oh, I believe him, but I just don't serve him. I quit. But there's been so many things. I said, Brother Ramsey, don't look at things. Look at him. Yeah. And he said, uh, well, Brother Ramsey, he said, I just don't serve the Lord. And I'd rather not talk about it. I said, well, Brother, God be with you. Help him. In a few days, I've had he took sick. Another minister, I won't call his name because I'm not sure. I believe he's sitting in the back right now. This minister went to him, a buddy, said, Brother Ramsey, don't you want to come serve the Lord? He said, no. God gave him into his messengers both times the warnings. He said, no. In a few hours, the man, he picked him up in his arms and he went home. God took him off the earth. Yes, yes sir. Remember Paul, what he told him over there, this man wouldn't obey the gospel. He said, turn him over to the devil That's right. for the destruction of his flesh that his soul will be saved. That's right. You can't play with God. Brother, that word's inspired everywhere of it. They like straight to the human line. That's right. You'll either toe the line, but if you're ever born of the Spirit of God, you are a son of God. Amen. Now, you come in, the dove and the old crow wolf was in the ark. That's right. When they turned the old crow loose, let's type at its backside. The old crow flew from dead body to dead body and he picked on the old dead carcasses. He was all right. Didn't make any difference because he was a crow to begin with. His nature, his appetite, his gastronomics could digest such a thing. Why, he was born with that kind of gastronomic. See, his gall and stuff in him would make that old dead bodies and make food for him. But when he was satisfied... And so is every man, I don't care how long you've been in church, and turn you loose in the world. If you still can go out and do the things you once did and enjoy it, it shows you never come to God. Amen. But when he turned the dove loose to see what she'd do, Amen. a dove hasn't got any gall. No. It can't digest those things. If it would eat them, it would kill them. But the dove, she'd try to fly down, she couldn't fit it. She tried to fly out. She couldn't stand. She lit in a little bush to get some rest and she had an olive leaf in her hand. She'd come back and knock at the door. Father Noah, open up, let me in. I can't stand it out here. Every man or woman's born to the Spirit of God, sure you can backslide. But brother, if you're a child of God, you can't stand the things of the world anymore because your digesting pains have been changed. Peter said, Lord, where would we go to when he said, do you want to go also? 
When the rest of them turned away, said, where would we go to? What could we do? You're the only one who has eternal life. And where can we go? Here he is standing here in his power, anointed with the Holy Ghost and a passionate prophet now. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, how I like to see it. How be it? Some have believed because they had a ordained everlasting life when this preacher preached. What did he do for the devil? Right amongst those bunch of howling hypocrites. Right amongst that bunch of wolves that would have pulled him piece by piece because of religious traditions. Amen. Peter cast his net out in here so there might be some fish in here. Amen. That's right. When he threw his net out there, he began to pull it. He said, the God of our fathers... Who went with Abraham from Ura down in the Chaldea? Amen. Yes, sir, has sent his son, Lord Jesus, who the heavens must receive into the restoration of all things. Said, How they said, You took the Prince of Peace with cruel hands, murdered and crucified. Said, By faith in his name, this man's healed. That's why I believe in the supernatural. Amen. He threw his net out there and he pulled it. And when he did, I'll be it, some of them in there was fish. Amen. The rest of the turtles run on all the snakes and so forth. They bounced Hallelujah. on back. But there was some fish in there too. Hallelujah. I'll be it, many believe the word. There was ordained to everlasting life. Yeah. Yes, sir, believe. And the number of man was about 5,000. What a net full he got. <laughs> yes, sir, maybe out of a million, but he got, he got 5,000 out of it. Notice. He doesn't care what kind of a looking pool it was. He throwed his net right on in it. Amen. That's right. We don't care where it's bootleggers, whether it's prostitutes, whatever it is. Throw it out. You don't know who's in down in there. You don't know. You can't judge. No man can judge. But you can throw the net and pull it to the altar and say, here it is, Lord. I've done my part now. If it's a, and if she's a feast to begin with, she'll be a feast forever. Amen. That's her. If it's a spider to begin with, it'll be a spider forever. If the re- reincarnated Son of the living God rains His power down and captures that person to the altar. The gospel nets around. Watch. Amen. And it came to pass on the morning that the rulers and the elders and the scribes and Ananias, the high priest and Caiaphas, and John and Alexandra, and many as were of the kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked them, by what power or by what name have you done this? Are you a Baptist? <laughs> Are you a Presbyterian? <laughs> well, what power, what church are you with? What's your authority? What seminary did you come out of? Who are you anyhow? Show me your credentials. Let's see who you are. Same thing. Well, what authority have you got being out here preaching like that? Are you here in the name of the Sanhedrin? Are you here in the name of the... Are the Sadducees or the Pharisees or the Herodians or the Publicans or who are you? There you are. Have you done this? And Peter, just fresh from the seminary, eighth verse. Peter with his bachelor's degree, <laughs> with his doctor's degree. <laughs> the Bible don't read it that way. There's what happened to Peter. Peter filled with the Holy Ghost. Filled, ain't he? Filled is all the way full. Amen. Peter, not sprinkled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. But Peter filled with the Amen. Holy Ghost. Amen. Now let's see what you're going to say to him. Now be careful what you say, because they ain't slaying you in jail, boy. You're a, you're a religious uh, a maniac now, as they think. Now let's see, you're proselyting, you're doing everything, so be very careful what you say. But Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done unto the important man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all and to the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Amen. whom you crucified, whom God raised up from the dead, even by him does this man stand here before you whole. Yeah. Could you imagine a man trying to put some kind of uh, dictionary of theology on a man like that? Brother, he stood anointed and filled with the Holy Ghost. He said, Why, you rulers, 
the very power of God Amen. that you profess to be. That same God raised His Son, Christ Jesus, to show the supernatural. Amen. And you with wicked hands have crucified Him. You don't have to nail Him to the cross. Just deny Him. You crucify Him again. They're doing the same thing today. Amen. You crucify Him. So be it more to you. In other words, the same God that you've professed Amen. to represent has raised this boy up. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. There you are. Said it's by him this man's a living. Amen. If we be examined for what we done to that man, said be it known unto you, it wasn't us. But it's through Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Amen. Amen. That this man stands whole today. Hallelujah. Now let me tell you what else he said here. This is a stone. Oh. Oh, brother, is he going to rub it in now? This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Amen. Listen, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby you must be saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Brother, I just kind of like Peter's preaching right there. Amen. What did he say to him in so many words? Don't you know the prophet Isaiah and many of the others spoke that the builders would reject the cornerstone? Amen. In other words, this is the very thing you rejecting is the very thing that God said you would do. Amen. Don't you know you're part of it? And may I say with reverence and may I say with respect, may I say with godly love this Amen. very day, my dear brother and sister, the very thing that the Bible said that these men would do in the last days have a form of godliness, but would Amen. deny the power of their... There they are! Yes. Amen. Amen! Amen! The cornerstone. Yes. Oh, Hallelujah. Sure, I believe in the supernatural. Amen! And he said, neither is our salvation under any other name. Amen! May I, instead of him this morning standing, and quote to this generation, for except the man be born again, he can't understand these things. The Amen. kingdom of God. As he said to Nicodemus of old, you can't understand it. You'll never understand it until God comes into your heart and you'll be a part of him and you'll say, yes, Lord. Every bit of the words inspired, I believe every bit of it. I believe it's the truth yeah. and here I am, Lord, to walk in the light. Amen. As long as you're borderline out there, you can't believe it. You can't do it. May the Lord help you this morning to see the supernatural. May you realize this, that Hebrews 13, 8 said, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Remember, His promises are just as good today as it was then. Every precept, every word of God is just as binding. And I don't care, brother, how many people criticize it, how many says it's not. I could today, by God's mercy, produce 10,000 people Amen. standing here that was once dying with cancer, that was once yes. blind, that was once crippled, that was once this way. In the last few years, has been made well by the power of the living God. And this is the very thing that Jesus Christ said would come to pass in the last days. And as sure as Jesus said these healings would take place, He said there'd be critics on the outside making fun of it and everything. Amen. Both of them was ordained to everlasting life. And I'm just it's an everlasting life or everlasting condemnation. I'm so happy today to know that God is in our midst and the Amen. shout of the King is here. The praises of God. There's many times I've failed to pray the prayer of faith. There's many times I've tried hard and failed to do it because my faith would not meet it. That doesn't change the Word of God one bit. No. If I prayed for 10,000 people today and 10,000 died in the morning, tomorrow night I'd be here praying for the sick just the same because God's Word said so. Amen. That's right. I believe in the old time religion. Amen. I believe in the joy. I do know. I believe that the path which we're walking is the path which our fathers have trod. Amen. Oh, give me this old time religion. Amen. Oh, give me the joy I can know, for I believe in a heartfelt religion like our fathers received long ago. Amen, Amen. Amen brother. Hallelujah. Let me die in a harness. Let me go as God's servant. Live or die. 
I believe the infallible Word of God is the truth. And it teaches divine healing and signs and wonders and miracles to appear in this last days and can Amen. prove it by the Word of God. Amen. And can show it into the world where it has taken effect. And if it will take effect out there, why won't it take effect for you? Jesus, Jesus said, if thou canst believe, yes. all things are possible. Yes. Yes. Shall we pray? Yes. Father God, we come to thee in the light of thy word and in the power of the Holy Spirit, which has endued us, Lord, and doubt us Amen. from on high to be your servants. And we love you. And we know that thou dost love us because you have chosen us. You said through your son, Jesus, you haven't chosen me, but I chose you. No man comes to God except through Christ. And no man can come to Christ except God draws him first. So, Father, to Thee we give praise. To Thee I humble my heart, Lord. Thank you. Oh, Christ of God, take away all out of my heart that's not what You'd want it to be, Lord. And let it just be for You and for Your glory. I love Thee, my Lord. And I pray that you'll bless these thy people here this morning. Every one of them. Many of them. Here that's sick, Lord. They got sick people. They're asking your request. And Father, hold oh, for these years. Since I know you, I believe you as a great healer. Thou hast proved it around and around the world, Lord. That you are the Lord Jesus resurrected from the dead. Now I pray, Father, that you'll bless these people here this morning. Bless if there be one unsaved here. May they now believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. No matter if I bring them up here at the altar, if they are not ordained to everlasting life, you would only just throw a net. That's all. But Father, as Peter preached the word and said, as many as believed was added to the church. Father, I pray that today you will add numbers to your church. Grant it. May many people believe this and see that it's the truth. They're here this morning for some purpose. And I pray that you have ordained them to everlasting life and may they receive it today through Jesus. And I pray for the sick as I bring them around the altar now to pray for them, to anoint them. Your elder and I, I pray God that you'll give us grace in your sight that on our part that there will be an unfailing faith. God's Word who even after thousands of years and those that have been dead for 4,000 years, Jesus went to tell them that the Word of God was confirmed in the earth. Hey. How infallible it is. And thou hast said, Lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. Yeah. The last commission, the last words that fell from your sacred lips, the inspired Word of God, you said, These signs shall follow them at least. They lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. And Father, as they bring the sick here in person this morning to be prayed for, I pray as we lay our hands upon them, anointing them with oil according to thy word, that every one of them will be healed. Grant that our faith will be right and their faith will be right. And anchored exactly on the word that's been preached this morning, the word of the living God. And give glory to thyself, for we ask that in Jesus' name, amen. Come where the dew drops of mercy are bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. We walk in the light, beautiful light comes where. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. I'm sorry I kept you late. Now the little children has a Sunday school treat here just in a minute. They got old boxes of candy and oranges and a sack full of stuff over here for the little ones as soon as we get done with the sacred part of the service just in a minute. Yeah. yeah. Now, I believe it's this baby. Thank you, Jesus. So then, if you bow your head, 
Almighty God, I do not know. Thou knowest that it's all something to me I can't understand. I don't know. But Father, it's seemingly that after this message <laughs> and this coming, this baby coming here and me looking into his face and according to what's been told me somewhere and a witness of Sister Cox and the Holy Spirit here at the altar, I do not know no more than I know the day that I walked to that old colored man that is blind. Neither can I understand now, Lord, no more than a boy in Finland that was raised from the dead. Neither do I understand the case of this. How would you put it upon a doctor's heart to send over here your spirit moving? Now, Father, in obedience to what you have commissioned to be done, and according to the word that I preached so hard this morning, as a believer in it, I go forward to challenge the devil that's bound this baby. And I lay my hands up for his head, and I go over to the line. Raise my hand to God who I believe in, that has spoken and it cannot fail. I ask that the cancer in this baby's eyes come out and go in the outer darkness where you belong, you dark evil one, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, whom I'm representing, and may this baby's eyes become normal. May the mother return giving praise and glory to God for the healing of this baby. This I do in true faith that God believing His Word taught it, and believing that a vision has struck me His servant. Standing in this same place, and Lord, you know what you're putting in my heart right now. And I ask for your words to be fulfilled, and this baby's life to be spared, and it to live and be healthy and strong, you can see again in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Sister dear, not knowing what the future holds, but believing. Here it comes to me. Here it is. It was to be something right here where my wife's casket laid, Hope, and it was this morning, and it was it was Hope that raised and said she would not die, and the thing I believe was meaning to this baby now. She's laying exactly at the same place. And I can almost positively say it's thus saith the Lord. Hey, I don't know yet, but I believe that baby will rise and live and be normal. God bless you. You let me hear from your baby. Your name is? Ford. God gave me that assurance back last year that she's going to be all right. And that she's going to be a witness for him. And see, up until June, I held on to that. And her eye improved. This bad eye improved. And even though it was just a shell there, well, she, we had evidence that she's seen. All of a sudden, in my face, began to wave a little bit. And see, I failed her and failed God along with it. And that's, that's why I'm here today, or she wouldn't be here. Like yes. That. You failed God I've yourself. Had, I've had the shirts all these. We went from x ray for one doctor and went to the hospital to another. Now they even treated for polio back a week ago. And five days in St. Joseph out here oh. at Louisville. But all along, God walked beside of me. I had to only believe. All things are possible. Only that's my theme song, too. Fair all not. things are possible, only believe. And they made test after test. They tested her for polio. They tested for sponges. They tested her for tuberculosis. Each one of those tests came through completely blind. The doctor said he treated her for polio because they was inclined to polio, but still the spinal test was negative. I understood the answer because God had heard my prayer and he slipped aside me. The child felt like a hand tapped each shoulder and raised them up a little bit mm-hmm. higher so I could smile. But still, all along, I began to think, is it the mother instinct in me? So just keep hanging on when everybody else is really killing me and, and saying all my other things against the God that I know can heal. I know. I've yes, sister. And that's why she's no. here today, because and, my faith wavered. I know that. Now, you promise God while you're standing on the same place, God let your baby get well, you'll serve Him as long as you live and be a re- renowned Christian and serving. You and your husband, too? Will you promise it back there, Dad, also, if God let your baby live? You promise you'll serve him his hands up to God? You'll well, do the same. I've had that promise before I walked into it today. You see, when I was just a child, he called me in his service, and I've never given in to it. So there's where the disappointment right. come in. I now, know God allowed me to know that. Now go and you and your husband serve the Lord. 
God bless the baby and make it well. Amen. God bless you, sister. Mark that in your books now.